Hey guys, guess what? I am in London. Look what I have here. It's the new Huawei Mate XS. <laughs> Their newly announced foldable device. And now I know you've seen unboxing and hands-on videos on the internet about this device, but what is it really like to use it in the real world? I only have 24 hours in this lovely city, so I figured I'd move into the device set it up, use it as my own, so that we can experience together the joys of owning this one-of-a-kind form factor. One week later. Hi guys, it's Michael from about a week and a half later. I'm back in New York and because I only had limited time in London, I used all my time to really use the phone and review it. Now I've had time to process my thoughts. Let's go. Okay, so let's start off by talking about durability. The question that an overwhelming amount of you wanted answered was, how durable is it? How fragile does the Mate XS feel? An understandable concern given that among the foldable phones in the market today, the Mate XS is the only one that folds outwards, leaving the screen exposed to the elements at all times. So the first time that you hold the phone, the tendency is for you to be a little bit careful because you haven't really done this before. But with continued use, you begin to trust in its hinge design. And after a while, it will feel normal. Since last year's Mate X, Huawei has made improvements to both the display and hinge mechanism. The display now has a double layer of polyamide on top, which Huawei claims is more expensive in weight than gold. Underneath those layers is a flexible OLED, and finally underneath, a softer polymer that serves as a cushion between the display and the phone's body. Huawei has also strengthened the Falcon hinge. On the previous model, you could see an almost watch band-like hinge. Now that's concealed by two oval shafts on both sides. A different material is also used, tungsten alloy. These improvements have definitely given the Mate XS a level of robustness about its design. Man, I've got to say, I got giddy every time I had to fold and unfold it. In terms of real world use, I wouldn't say I was any more careful with the phone than any other glass phone I've used without a case. Now, not many YouTubers covered this, but the phone actually comes with a rubber bumper. I put it on immediately and it made the phone feel more grippy. And I don't know if you can see it in this video, but the bumper protrudes a slight bit, meaning if you put the phone down on a flat table, it will keep the screen from actually touching. I will say, however, that there were a couple of times like during dinner one night where I felt the table wasn't very smooth and I instinctively rested my Mate XS on another phone instead of on the table. So you definitely will have to make some behavioral adjustments, like checking for keys or coins before you stick it in your jeans pocket, which I actually did without thinking much about it. I will say that it's a known fact that plastic scratches faster than glass. So here are a few suggestions for version three. You'll notice the phone comes with a built-in screen protector that you should not remove. So if anything gets scratched, it's the screen protector, not the display. Perhaps in the future at Huawei authorized service centers, they could remove that screen protector and replace it for you, even for a fee. Number two, I would have loved if Huawei actually shipped the phone with a leather holster. You know, there is no possibility of using a case because there's a display on both sides, but it would have been nice if there was this nice smooth surface that you could plop your phone into before throwing it in your bag or your pocket. I've used many foldables in the past year and a half, but the design on the Mate XS makes the most sense. When folded shut, you get a full-size smartphone with a corner-to-corner -corner display, no notches, no punch holes. And to be honest, unless you needed that bigger screen, you could keep it this way the entire day. There are times, however, when it makes perfect sense to open it up and use the full screen, apart from wanting to show it off, which I have to admit, I did a lot. My favorite was during long tube rides, because I was in London, where, like here in New York, I was offline for most of the trip. I loved that I could just open it up and read a book. The form factor is perfect for the Kindle app. Actually, it's a great size for any kind of reading, like news articles on the internet. And if you haven't made GadgetMatch.com your daily habit, you better do. 
Using maps to navigate was another time I felt it made more sense using it in tablet mode. And of course, there's that multitasking bit. Huawei has a built-in feature that lets you run apps side by side and even a third one floating. As an unfolded tablet, it's a ridiculously thin device. Most of the components are located here, which also serves as a grip for holding the tablet. For years, Huawei has led the charge in pushing the boundaries of photography on a smartphone. From the P20 all the way up to the current Mate 30 Pro, the Mate XS carries on that tradition with a camera system that's similar to the P30 Pro, co-engineered with Leica. There are four cameras, a wide-angle 3x telephoto lens that can zoom up to 45x, and an ultra-wide-angle lens, plus a time-of-flight camera for better depth sensing. The experience is the same as on any Huawei flagship, not inferior like on most foldables, especially in low light. Sit back, relax, and take a look at some sample photos I shot around London. Now, because the display folds, you don't need selfie cameras. You just switch to selfie mode and the phone will tell you to rotate the device to engage this outer screen. I'll be honest, I don't like selfies taken with the Mate XS. For some reason, the photos look better when not using selfie mode, even if you're using the same camera. Hopefully, that's something that can be solved with a software fix. But here, take a look at some selfies and let me know what you think. Another complaint I have is that the shutter button is too far away for one-handed use. It's right here in the middle, a far stretch for my short fingers, and I was really scared to extend them that far, especially with the rest of the phone balanced like this. I wish there was a way to just move the entire interface or even just the shutter button to the right hand most side of the phone. Good thing about this smaller secondary display is that it enables one of my favorite features called mirror shooting. You'll understand how big of a deal this feature is if you're an Instagram boyfriend or a girlfriend or if you're like me who's single but oftentimes has to shoot photos for people like Super Saf. It's a huge convenience that the person you're shooting gets to see what the photo looks like when you're taking the shot. That way, you don't have to go back and reshoot the entire series if the person didn't like the way he or she smiled or not smiled in the photo. Or in my case, if I didn't hold the phone one millimeter further to the left. Right, Super Saf? Now, one of the questions I've been asked on social media is, uh, what is the device like as a vlogging camera? So here I am before the uh, sun sets. I wanted to do a uh, daytime uh, vlog. There is no selfie camera on this device. It's also the main camera, and I'm using the ultra wide angle lens to shoot this. I'm not wearing my lapel, so um, this is the onboard microphone on the, the device picking this up. What do you guys think? Here's more footage I shot around London. A lot of you also had questions about the phone's battery life. Is it long lasting? How long did it take to fill it up? How big is the battery? Well, I'm happy to report battery life is actually pretty good. Considering I use the phone heavily during my two days of testing, at the end of my first full day, my phone lasted about nine hours of real heavy use. That included a 40 minute phone call with my airline, tethering, plenty of photo taking, and social media. Screen on time was over five hours. Charging was fast too. 
On the go, it only took me 20 minutes to get to 45% using my 45 watt Huawei supercharged power bank. Using the bundled 55 watt charger, I got to 63% in the same amount of time, 83% in 30, and a full charge in 54. So yeah, super impressed. Okay, so now it's time to have a serious conversation about apps. As many of you may know, Google Play services is not available on the Mate XS, leading many of you to ask the question, so what if it's a great phone if I can't get my Google apps on it? Is it even usable? Valid question. So here are my two cents. You can get most of your favorite apps onto the phone even without the Google Play Store. Some are available as direct downloads from their respective websites, or you can do what I did and use a service called APK Pure. I downloaded the app from their website, and once installed, I used it to download other apps I use every day like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook Messenger, even some Google apps like Maps and Chrome. You can sign into your Google account via Chrome, and I can confirm Google Maps works even without Play services installed. Using the Mate XS for a couple of days has made me consider how much we hugely rely on Google Apps and services. And I think it's time that we rethink putting all our eggs in one basket. I know Google means well, and they have applied for a permit from the US government to be able to offer their services to Huawei anew. I'm beginning to see the danger of relying on one company for the bulk of our digital life. What happens when someone in power decides to take that all away? During my time with the phone, I also tried to learn to use YouTube via the browser, and I realized that while an app is definitely more convenient, one can definitely survive without it. Huawei is also ramping up its own version of the Play Store called App Gallery. It's investing millions of dollars in helping app developers make their apps available for direct download there. Recently, Telegram was added, WhatsApp was already pre-installed on my device, Asphalt 9 was available there too, even Microsoft's Office Suite was officially available already. In fact, very recently, Huawei CEO Richard Yu told me he believes that apps like Instagram, Facebook and Twitter will also be available on the Huawei App Gallery real soon. Unlike some foldables, you'll find that the Mate XS doesn't compromise on hardware power. Huawei has made sure to give it the most premium of specs, including their latest chip, the Kirin 990 with 5G built in. There's also 8 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. It was definitely more power than I needed on the two days that I used the device. I played some games like Asphalt 9 fit the screen perfectly and ran smoothly. So is the Huawei Mate X S your gadget match. Let me finish this video by answering some of your questions. Some of you ask for comparisons versus the flip and the fold. I do like the form factor of the Galaxy Flip a lot, particularly being able to fold it into a smaller clamshell. The fold, on the other hand, hasn't really piqued my interest because of how small its outer display is. Of the three, the form factor of the Mate XS is the most practical. Sans any compromises, you get a full-blown smartphone, a tablet, and you still have that third screen, which is perfect for taking photos of others. These two questions go together. In that price range, who is it for? Is it really practical for everyday use? Now, the Mate XS will retail for just under 2,500 euros and will start going on sale sometime in late March to early April. It's a lot of money to pay for a smartphone, but I truly believe that it's worth every penny. This is what the smartphone of the future feels like. It's so way ahead of its time, so much so that even if this year's release didn't change the basic technology, it's still far more advanced than any other smartphone in the market today. True, its price tag means that this phone isn't for everyone, but for those of you willing to spend on bleeding edge tech, this is money well spent. And your last question. You think you can use it as a daily driver for a month? My answer is a definite yes. Even without Google Play services, I was able to install most of the apps that I needed, so much so that I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Instead, I thoroughly enjoyed having a piece of the future in my pocket. 
Several times I had to pinch myself to remind myself that I wasn't dreaming that this was real. And on my last day in London, it was so tough to put the phone back in its box and give it back. I know 2,500 euros is a lot of money to spend, but I'm seriously considering popping down that cash to own that piece of the future and make it part of my daily reality. What about you? What do you think of the Huawei Mate XS? Let me know in the comments section below and we'll post some of your best answers in our next video. To make sure you don't miss any upcoming videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post a new video. Follow us on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Till the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.